Well, hi everybody, it's Lisa Tamati here from Running Hot Coaching and this is the series that I'm doing on how-to, the how-to of health, fitness, nutrition and mindset of course and in particular running, my specialty, but also yeah, all those other topics and today I wanted to go over a motivation question. One of the most common questions that I always get asked is, why the hell do you do it? You know, they might be watching a documentary or listening to some stories that I tell, and and some of them are harrowing stories, and some of them are quite terrifying, Um, and all of them are hard. They're all very, very challenging. Um, And my answer to that is really, it's it's a really hard one to answer succinctly, but I'm going to try in this podcast, go over the motivations, what is it that drives people in general to do extreme sports, to push their limits, whether it's physically, even in, in um, you know, adrenaline sort of sports or in business or academically? What is it that, that makes us push those limits, as my show is titled, Pushing the Limits? Um, you know, I'm always getting asked, and when I get asked a question like that, I always think, that person's not an athlete if they're asking me that because they would, then they would understand why it is that we push each ourselves so hard. Now, we don't ever just do things because they're easy, do we? You know, we, there are always reasons to be challenging ourselves. Um, and I just wanted to go a, over a couple of, of, of meandering thoughts around this. I think what people are really trying to ask me is why don't you just give up when the going gets tough? Um, most people would just lie down and cry. How can you push on for a couple of hundred kilometers or push on through the night when it's freezing cold, when there's sleep deprivation through dangerous territory? How can you even fathom doing all those sort of things? And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are doing it. I'm not the only one. There's lots of us. And there must be a reason, I think. Um, and I think part of it lies in our ancestry that it's only really been for the last you know, 100 odd years where we have lived in safe, very comfortable sort of lifestyles where we don't have to be hunting and gathering, where we don't have to run from one village to the other uh, to to get a message through or to get water or so we're not living in the subsistence uh, hunter-gatherer culture anymore that ancestrally we, we have been and I think there's an innate need uh, among modern day people to reconnect with uh, the earth in the way that we want to spend our time outdoors, we want to discover who we are when the going gets tough, we want to find out what sort of things can I handle, how far can I push myself, am I as strong as my ancestors used to be and um, quite often the answer to that is no because we haven't been brought up in that same manner. I mean, we have every uh, imaginable luxuries, you know, here in the Western world, and a lot of that makes us soft, and I think that's one of the reasons why many people want to reconnect with their ancestry and with Mother Earth. Um, So when these people are asking me this question, it goes back to why don't you give up, because that's what I would probably do. Why don't you just lie down and cry? How can you push through pain barriers and beat the odds and continue for hours or days in a state of exhaustion that that most humans wouldn't even uh, conceive as possible through, you know, all sorts of things, sleep deprivation, hallucinations, altered mind states, uh, blisters, shin splints, inflammation, digestion problems, you name it, you go through it uh, when you're out there pushing the limits in, in whatever sport you do. Um. And after swearing black and blue, every time that you go out and do these things, what I've also found is that you end up doing it. At the the end of every race, I'm pretty much going, well, that's it. I'm not doing this again. Um, But, you know, we have a remarkable ability to forget pain. Uh, As soon as it's over, we forget just how bad it was. And I think um, it's probably an indictment of um, some of us with a lack of uh, intelligence in that area that we go back for for a second helping and we, we, we go back and try it again. But for most of us today, it's just too comfortable. It's too physically soft. And at the same time, it's so terribly demanding and stressful that we can hardly keep up with everything that's whirling around us, all the chaos, all the noise, all the social media, 
everything is just blasting our senses all the time and I think this is also a reason why people are searching out and starting to search out for uh, quietness in nature and being reconnected to Mother Earth to be able to understand uh, the the energy of, of the world and be able to read the weather, be outside, see the sunset, see the sunrise, all of those sort of things. So for me, running helps regain a healthy balance between my mind, my body and my soul and that's the real reason that I do it. If I don't run, I feel physically ill. That's probably an addiction to, um, what is it, those endorphins um, and different uh, hormones and, and, and chemicals that are released in the body. Um, but I, I physically feel unwell if I'm not training my body every day or pretty much every day at least and I feel mentally far more balanced when I can go out and smash myself or smash myself is the wrong word but go out and train and be outside push myself hard then I can come home and I can sit down in front of the computer or do whatever the jobs that need to be done uh, w with a quiet peaceful soul and that left brain of ours that one that chatters to us all the time that's telling us um, all sorts of, of rubbish that's that's uh, saying you're not good enough that's putting doubts in your mind that's that's bringing up all the fears that's limiting yourself that part of the brain goes quiet uh, invariably when you're out in the wilderness and you're connecting with yourself physically and with with the earth and I think that's one of the main reasons why people do it. To have that um, that single-minded focus when you're doing an ultra marathon, for example, and you might be out in the desert for maybe for a week, maybe doing a multi-day stage race, and there is just one thing on your mind, and that's just getting through each and every day and getting to that finish line in one piece. You're so occupied with survival that you don't have time for all these other negative thoughts and and gossip, and social media, and bad news, and all those things that fly around us in our normal world, and that is a real purifying process to go there, go back to that, and it's also, you are stripped back to basics, you can't hide when you're being pushed to the limits, there's nowhere to hide, your true character comes out, you find out what you're made of, and that's always very reassuring to me when I find that I'm not made of sugar, and that I can push through things, and overcome obstacles, and there are so many lessons to be learned from being disciplined and, and training hard and preparing and project managing and actually getting to the start line for you know for starters and then also doing the race and pushing to the absolute limits of what you're capable of there are so so many lessons that I can take from there and then apply them into my life um, it takes real discipline to train for an event and then to give it my absolute absolute all in order to finish that race with every ra race I enter I know I am also risking failure but I also have the confidence in myself to know that I will push myself to the very limits in the pursuit of success and the times when I have failed I've had to accept that that is just part of the journey of someone who who pushes the limit it's not always going to go to plan you know, uh, you can plan everything, but you, w when you're actually standing on the start line, you have to separate yourself from the consequences and say, well, I've done what I can do. Now it's sort of in the lap of the gods. Whatever happens from here on in, I just have to be sensible. I have to go out. I have to do all of my um, things that I plan to during the race and then um, separate myself from the consequences because it'll be what it'll be and you know that's what that's what an adventure is adventure means you don't really know the outcome it could go either way and when I go into a race I leave all the rubbish behind me my entire life all the troubles that I have at home the bills that need paying everything that that swirls around in our world all that lets, gets left behind and you have the single-minded focus and that's a really beautiful beautiful thing now I don't particularly love the pain of racing um, but that is part and parcel of it and when you have painful experiences and you're pushing through physically through barrier after barrier it does make you tougher and it helps you be mentally and emotionally more resilient for the things that will come at you in life so you know for me being an athlete is one of the best lessons I could ever have it's the best university 
for life in general and I find you know that everything that I've managed to learn out on the field out racing out on expeditions or on trips that I've been on and all the obstacles that I come across I can then go home and I can apply those same principles to my business to my family life and whatever I'm facing whatever obstacle it is that I'm that I'm facing so I don't actually enjoy pain that's not why I'm out there people sometimes think that ultra marathoners want to punish themselves or they have a masochistic tendency and I don't think that's the case at all but we understand that that is part and parcel of it and we don't shy away from it we don't let the fear of that pain stop us from achieving that which we set out to do. Um, I enjoy the focus that it gives me, that single-minded focus. And when I'm racing, my mind is constantly preoccupied with taking the next step. I know I can't let go for a minute, especially like in desert races or when I'm out running through the night. I've got to be watching where I'm going. I've got to watch my step. I have to check in with my body. Um, I have to see if I've drunk enough, if I've eaten enough. I have to worry about certain, you know, niggles that are popping up or um, what's happening in my tummy. All of those things I need to be aware of. And that takes up my entire focus. And I become this... um, other human being the person that I am when I'm racing is not the person that I am when I'm at home and I'm working in my normal daily life you become the sort of superhuman person if you like you you enter another altered state especially once the fatigue really starts to hit in you become this other person and you can't find that altered state necessarily uh, in your daily lives and this is one of the another uh, another of the beautiful things uh, that happens when you push your, your limits physically uh, and mentally, um, that you actually discover these new connections. You Your brain starts to work in a different way. The ego starts to disappear. That chatter uh, you know, that goes on in our brains constantly starts to die down and it all becomes very focused, very, and you often have epiphanies when you're out on the trail. It's a very cathartic process. Um, I find often, you know, I might be going along and and find myself crying my eyes out and and thinking about some issue that has happened in my life that I haven't dealt with and it all comes out in the wash. When you're physically and emotionally uh, at your wit's end, um, sometimes it's this cathartic sort of emotional uh, roller coaster comes out as well and you can be running along maybe it's because I'm a girl I don't know <laughs> I don't know if the blokes do this as well but it certainly is you know a cathartic process and I come back often from these races feeling cleansed in the, my soul and my mind and my body feels absolutely smashed and ruined but it will recover and the lessons that I've learned along the way are just so so valuable um, you know when you're when you're running along and you're having to, to, to calculate everything and, and work it all out and keep yourself motivated, you haven't got time to worry about, you know, what your neighbour's been talking about you behind your back. You know, your whole focus is just getting on to that fin- finish line. And uh, and it's extremely tiring. There's 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 no downtime in a race. Um, and that is a, a particularly hard thing, you know, even in a stage race where you get the relief of, of getting to a camp at night and spending the night there and you're sitting around maybe sharing war stories, but you're always preparing and getting ready for that next day and that you know that you're in a race that you can't let go until the end of that week or whatever it is. Or when I was running through New Zealand, that whole time you realise that, you know, this is you're in it for the long haul and you've got to keep it together for that time that you're out there. Um, and the whole time you're still focused on that goal of making the finish line. And the rewards for all that hard work are the sense of pride, the the sense of achievement, of tired satisfaction of, yeah, I, I, I did it. And the confidence that comes out when you actually cross the finish line in something massive, say in bad water or running through New Zealand or whatever it was, you know, the, the, those are moments that you really treasure and it, it, in, in the moment itself, you might be completely numb. You might not feel anything, but uh, you will eventually, it'll start to dawn on you what you have achieved and just how magnificent that is. And then you can start to integrate that into your psyche and your ego and your the way that you approach other projects and obstacles 
you know, when you've faced, say, a truck full of uh, Bedouin men coming at you in the middle of the Sahara while you're running 333 kilometres across Niger and you're all alone and you've faced that and you've survived that uh, and come out the other end, then facing a, you know, a boardroom full, full of managers and high-flying CEOs isn't quite as daunting, you know. It doesn't have the same impact, you know, because everything is relative and it's always a matter of perspective. Um Another thing that I really love about ultra running is that when someone is challenged in such an extreme way, both mentally and physically, you get to see the the true essence of that person. Uh, and I think that's something a lot of us want to do. To get to that point in a race or an adventure or expedition where we've got nothing left, that we're absolutely totaled and we've given everything, but we somehow managed to pull something out of ourselves and keep going. And that's what most of us want to find out. Have we got that in us? Can we push it that little bit harder? What are we made of? And you find the most amazing friends when you're doing this sort of sport because all the niceties of, of the world, the su- superficialness of our Western world gets stripped away. You can't hide your character, your true character. And I've met amazing people um, who've put you know, their fellow racers before themselves, who've gone above and beyond to save people, to help people. Um, and then I've come across complete assholes, you know, and, and where where um, people have turned into these egotistical, it's all about me, it's all about self. And you that's what comes out when you're doing this sort of race. You find out it's the best team building exercise <laughs> because you find out just the, the true nature of the people that you are with and whether you want to remain friends with them. Sometimes you end up with the best friends and other people you never want to see again because you've been to places and they've seen you in states and you know your good and your bad side will come out and uh, you know sometimes it's not always a a beautiful sight and other times it's absolutely amazing Um, so all those normal barriers that you know it takes years and years and years in, in the western world to really get to know each other all of that's stripped away very very quickly And another great thing about these races is that it's a great leveller. There's no status, there's no prestige. It doesn't matter what car you drive, whether you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or whether you're the toilet cleaner at the local school. You're the same as the man next to you or the woman next to you. Um, And that's another great leveller. And another great reason, I think, in some of these races, especially these multi-day stage events, is the United Nations feel of it. You get to meet people from, you know, all these nations all around the world, and it's a beautiful, unifying um, thing. It, you know, it's the, it would be the best way to deal with our political differences or to deal with our religious differences and all of that sort of thing because we have to live together for a week in very close quarters and at the end of the day we're all human and we all are good people, most of them are good people and you're all helping each other. I remember a special moment when I was in the Sahara and I was doing a, a, a multi-day stage race and one day out of these multi days uh, is always a really long one you know around the 100k mark and I'd done this 100k and I'd come in at about nine at night we'd started at six in the morning it was a hell of a long day but there were competitors coming in for the next 24 hours basically and about the following day at about four o'clock that I think the last guy came in and he was from Korea and he was literally hobbling along like, you know, 1K an hour. He, 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 he'd gone to hell and back in that 100-odd kilometres, but he was still fighting his way through. And everyone knew that there was still one competitor out there, and they were all worried, you know, because, you know, stuff can happen out there. And you know, People do die, and, you know, it, it is not without its dangers. And so everybody is at the finish line waiting for this one guy, whether he's going to make it or not. And, you know, you see him coming over the horizon and slowly, like, you know, like an old man with a walking stick, just one inch at a time, inching his way towards the finish line. And then within, like, you know, a couple of hundred metres from the finish line, everybody just starts dancing and chanting, and the drums are going, and... Uh, we are all celebrating this man's victory. And he's the last across the line, not the first across the line. And I remember it was a beautiful moment. The whole camp, all 200-odd runners from all nations around the world, all with their flags up, all waving them for this Korean man to come across the line, who comes across the last 
10, 15 metres just bowing to us all as he stumbles across the line. He's got a, a grin across his face that, uh, you know, from one ear to the other. And there are people crying and there are, you know, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a really emotional journey. You know that that guy's been to hell and back, you know. He, he's gone through all sorts and he's overcome and he's reached the finish line. And all of the nations, it doesn't matter whether you are from, um, I don't know, Australia or um, Egypt or wherever, they were all celebrating together and that was a really really beautiful thing so that's another really good reason to to do these sort of runs so I probably gabbled on long enough for you today so that's my answer as to why do I do these things and I'm sure a lot of other ultra marathoners and iron men and uh, adventure people were out there would would agree with me you find out who you are it strips you back to basics you learn to reconnect with mother earth you walk in the footsteps of your ancestors when you do this sort of thing and it's a it's an amazing and incredible experience that leaves you so much richer in life it's hard it's brutal at times but you know strength comes from struggle so thanks very much to, uh, for listening today i hope you've enjoyed it please as always if you would um, like and subscribe to the channel and maybe give us a rating or a review we really really appreciate it um, and i'll be back um, in the next few days with another episode um, to hopefully educate and uh, inspire you to, to greatness and to achieving more. Thanks for listening.